All right, everybody, we're doing something simple. We're gonna make ourselves disappear, but I want to do with a little bit of style. This uh, setting is from a previous tutorial. If you haven't seen it, it's one where we make this dial move, gives a little bit of story to your game. So we've got ourselves an acorn, and I'm going to put the acorn in here, and we disappear. But we don't just disappear. I don't know if you caught that, but we disappear with a little bit of style. So let's look at how to do that. And I'm going to put the acorn in here, this is the simplest setup. We've got our conditional button living inside of here with this dial. If you don't know how to do this part, if you've never seen it, check out the tutorial. I have linked it below. It comes with an item spawner, which is an acorn in this case. And then we have our two player spawners and we have an audio device because it's going to make a sound when we disappear. That's it. And of course our game manager, which is our verse device that we're going to go look at immediately. Okay, so we're inside of verse and this is our game manager. We've got a bunch of stuff going on in here, but what's really important is just to look at how to make a player invisible. And the simplest way to make a player invisible is to get their fort character and then just call hide. But I thought I would add a little bit of pizzazz, a little bit of style, a little bit of story and make it look like it's sort of an electrical thing that happens. So what I'm doing here is I'm hiding and showing the player in, with a little bit of a delay. So 0.1 of a second. This all adds up to one second because the audio file that I have is one second long, so it made a lot of sense to me. So essentially when that conditional button gets its acorn, we are going to call this function. That is defined right here in the on button activated function that runs when our conditional button up here in our on begin is defined. So conditional button, activated event, subscribe to the on button activated, which is down here. This rotates the dial, we've already seen that. It grants the weapon, we've already seen that. And it spawns, which means that it calls a function that has a delay in it. So it makes an asynchronous thread that just does its own thing until it's done. And that is here. We pass in the agent, meaning the player that turned the dial or gave the acorn. And we say, hey, can I have the fort character object that lives in there? And this is no problem, if it's no problem for that matter. So this is an if here, because this is an optional, this is a failable function. Then play the sound in the audio device, which as I said, lives right here. Let's take a look at the setup really quick for the audio device. I've got in my buzzing sound in here that I've downloaded. I've set the volume to one. This is invisible in the game. So visible in the game is not checked. I will have it uh, enabled. Uh, not that it matters because it doesn't play automatically. We can turn off play on hit because nobody's gonna be able to touch it anyways, and then can be heard by everyone. Although we're gonna pass in the agent to make it heard by the agent, but you can have an option there. And then play location is instigating player. So you can put this anywhere in your scene, uh, but it will be played where the player who instigated this thing to go off is that. And uh, the playback speed will be one. And the rest of it is essentially just set to default. Okay, so that's the audio player. So when we call play and we pass in the agent object, it's going to make that audio player play that sound where the agent is. And then we hide ourselves. And then for 10% of a second, we sleep or pause, and then we show ourselves and then point two, hide, point two, show, point one, hide, and so on and so forth. And then 20 seconds later, we're going to show ourselves because we don't want this to be forever unless you want it to be forever. And in such a case, just don't do anything. This will run and then nothing else will happen. But if you want to re-show the player, you can do this. And in fact, if you wanted to be even fancier, you could show the player in the opposite order of this by making another function that says make player visible and then copy this and just change it so that it makes them visible in the end. So that would be kind of a fancy thing to do. And then the only other thing to kind of note, but you probably are already aware of, is that we have our editable for our buzz sound for our audio player device. And then we have that set up in the game manager. If we look in our editables here, we just kind of link that up. So the stuff on the stage can talk to the device that we have for verse. So that's it. That's the end of that. It's really easy. If you don't want to do this special effect and add a sound, you can simply just hide them. So just a little bit of a bonus information for the person who asked the question. They wanted to hide the character upon spawning. And in such a case, you would connect up your spawner device or your player spawner, which is a player spawner device. And then on begin, we would want the spawned event. Subscribe to that. Call on player spawned. On player spawn lives right here. And then we would get the fort character, same way we did before. And then in here, we would just 
call hide. We'll go fc dot hide and parentheses. And that would hide the character as soon as they're spawned. Hopefully that has been helpful. Hopefully that's been interesting. If you have any questions, let me know anytime. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Sitting as a vet, but everybody know that you're a sweat with a restless.